ready to get going. Yes, all right. Well, hey, I've got a few things I want to cover before we get going, but we're going to go outside, and, and uh, after we do, I'd like you to just, we're probably going to have eight minutes of stretch slash walk, but before we do, you're going to line up right between the pillars, and I'm going to get up on my truck, and I'm going to get our before photo. We haven't got our before photo yet, so you guys are going to be part of the before photo tonight, all right? One thing I do want to mention real quick, and I'm going to put over here on the table, is on the Rock 5K. Next week, I'm going to give more information. I've got magnets. I've got signs. I've got posters next week to give everybody. But if you or your business or someone you know would like to be a sponsor for the Rock 5K, these are the sponsor packets here. You can also find them online. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, obviously you can ask me, but you can also ask Miss Rebecca Kearns here uh, is our director of sponsorship. So uh, she can help put all that together. Uh, I will show you the math in a few weeks, but really sponsorships help uh, really 100% to the proceeds. Everything else we get for registrations really just sort of help, help us host a race. Uh, but the sponsorships really help go straight to the, to the uh, beneficiary. So really helpful, and we love our sponsors. We'd love to promote you as well. Now, tonight, before we get going, a few things about running health that I just want to share with us. We talked about stretching last week and how that can help prevent injuries. Walking and running is overwhelmingly good for you. Agree? The benefits, obviously, countless studies about heart health, about muscular and skeletal health, our mental health, obviously, we know as well. However, if we do this long enough, if we stay at it, there is potential for injury. In fact, statistics would say that out of every 100 hours you run, you have about a 50% chance of having some sort of minor injury. Does that make sense? Are you computing that? 100 hours run about 50% chance. The good news, however, is that the majority are very minor. The good news is also many, if not most of those are preventable. So you can help control which 50% you are in in those 100 hours. Typical running related injuries, I'll have this on the video as well to kind of go back, but these would be the ones that most runners would say, I've, you know, I've run for 20 years, yeah, I've kind of had a little bout with this or that or something like that. Uh, IT band, any IT bands in the room? Yeah, that's me from the hip down the outside of the knee, generally is IT band related. Uh, it usually acts up after a run, it just stays with you a little bit, and it's just a matter again of what we're doing to stretch it out. Generally, there's not a lot of long-term, if any, uh, permanent injury. But uh, if it's on the outside of the knee, generally a rule that it's something that we can run through and it will be fine. The inside of the knee, that can be a different story. So that's one way of kind of gauging, should you see somebody, what should you do? Uh, runner's knee is more sort of that kneecap, back of the knee thing that most of the time is associated with our knees having been in hibernation and then us waking them up. Right? Oh, it's been a long time. My knees, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we haven't done anything. They're just waking up. Generally, run through it, but that is something. Shin splints. Get the wrong shoes, get the wrong surface. Some of us battle that. Shin splints. I see a lot of head nods for that. Plantar fasciitis. Anybody? Oh, yeah. You wake up in the morning and the bottom of your foot, it's like, oh, this is your way out of the bed, right? It's just, oh, stretch it out. You get the socks that pull your toes up. Um, again, can be shoe related, uh, can be possibly that's when a good uh, support might be good for it, but really stretching that, that tendon out. Um, that's one of those things that can, that can happen. Low back pain, um, you can, you know, anything we do can result in low back pain a lot of times. And it, that seems like one the older we get, right? I ate dinner last night and I've got low back pain, <laughs> you know? It's like, oh man. So, but it can, you know, uh, fr from our feet up, it does impact all the way up our spine. So we want to be careful. Calf muscle pulls, again, if we're either doing the wrong stretches or we're not stretching out. Uh, and then Achilles tendonitis, any of those. If you, if you summed them all up as far as injury related, that's probably 95% of the running related injuries. Okay. 90% of those 95 are generally caused by the terrible twos. Anybody know about the terrible twos? Terrible twos is saying that we're going too far or we're going too fast and we're doing it too soon. I feel good. I think I can add another mile. I feel okay. I think I can run faster. No, trust that plan. The, the terrible twos will, will 
can be the cause of several of those on that list. Uh, we just take off and uh, we do something uh, that we don't want to do. So please watch the terrible twos, not just this season, but any time in the future. You know, um, even for some of us that have put in a lot of mileage, if we're off for any amount of time, we've got to take it easy getting back into it. It's like riding a bike, but not. <laughs> we can jump back on pretty easily and it comes back a little bit quicker, but we have to be very careful or we'll get hurt really quick, right? All right, so real quickly, some prevention, warm-up stretching like we've talked about, proper shoes, proper form, alternate surfaces where you can. If you run on the street, see if you can run on a trail. If you run on a trail, see if you can move maybe to a track surface, do a treadmill. If you alternate those surfaces, that tends to help uh, alleviate some of those foot and knee related injuries. Uh, rice is? Elevation, yeah, that generally helps with a lot of it. Strength training, as you can, if, if you can do any sort of strength training with your legs, again, in the gym with just light weights, uh, calf raises, those sort of things really help as well. And then hydration. The 10% rule, the 10% rule says that we don't want to add more than 10% of our distance week over week, okay? Now, early on, you'll kind of calculate differently, but if, if you're running um, three miles this week, let's not go beyond 3.3 the next week. And then let's not add more than another 0.3.13, something like that. Something like that. Uh, and then the trip fall rule. The trip fall rule basically says that uh, the number one running, walking related injury is nothing that was on that chart. It's tripping and falling. That we can prevent. So being aware, again, brings us back to what we're doing, our surfaces, where we're putting our feet, what we're trying to run in, is it wet? All of those sort of things. That's generally the number one uh, running related injury, particularly around recreational runners, okay? So just some things to think about as we go out today. And when we do our workout here, we're doing a 90 second run, 90 second walk. Then we're gonna do the three minute run. Yeah, but here's the good news. The longest walk you've had yet, three minute walk. 90, 90, three, three, twice. If you do the math, we're, we're doing the same amount of running or additional exertion time as we have been doing the past two weeks. We're just doing it in a different way so that we're staying at that pace a little bit longer, building that time on our feet. Okay, so 90, 90, three, three. Everybody ready? Yeah, let me, let me pray for us real quick tonight. I'll pray us here, and then at the end, we just kind of let you go. Um, our Heavenly Father, again, I just want to thank you for an opportunity. Here we go. Here's what we're going to do tonight. We are going to search for God's power, and then we're going to relate it to our, um, to our passage later. So in the middle of your tables, do not open them yet. As the envelope says, you have not been instructed. All right. In your packets, you've got a word search. Now, here's the thing. There is one that is on this tan paper cardstock. That is your official word search. Then there is a white paper one for everybody else at the table to help find said words of the word search. There are pins in your envelope. Do not open your envelope yet, because here's the other thing. When you open it, what I want you to do is have decided what your team name is, put your team name at the top, and then whoever's in charge of the official sheet will be the one who sort of listens and talks and finds on that sheet. We are going to have 12 minutes, because this is Run For God 12, to find as many of the words as you can. Also, in your envelope, one of you, to Dyke's door prizes, I have no clue where this one ended up, there is also a card that says your table has won the door prizes tonight. So you'll come up after, after uh, tonight and I'll have the whole, I've got socks and water bottles, all kinds of stuff from Fleet Feet. You can look in the bag and choose as a table. Okay? And go!
Nice. And 39. Nice. Anybody else? Okay. The number was? 68. 68. Right here. Right here. Rocket. Rockets, right? All right. You know, we're deer theme. So this week, you guys get to go down and enjoy. Each of you get at least one, maybe two, maybe three donuts. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Who, who had the, uh, the door? Did you guys win it? Can I see the card? Yes, the door prize is right there. Afterwards, y'all come on. We'll have a whole bag. What afterwards? Hey, good work. Okay, so that was fairly fun. <laughs> fairly hard, fairly issue there. Yeah, nice. I have answer sheets up here and, and extra copies of the, of the search if you'd like to take them home for anybody and for next week or whatever. So those are up here. Now, Psalm 18. Psalm 18. We want to talk about this tonight. We're going somewhere with this, so we want to build on it, okay? Week one. The introduction, just that superscription that you look at and you see Psalm 18 on in your Bible. That introduction said it was written to the choir master. Nice job. Yeah. And it was written by David. Okay. Now, then we looked at the first three verses. It's called the prelude of praise. And basically, what did we do week one with that? Or week two with that? Yeah. Right. How do we uh, approach God? What, what is our descriptions of praise to God? Our rock, our fortress, our shield, our strength, our defender. What was the really, uh, what was the one we used in there? Our fortress? Our horn of salvation. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we're starting with praise. Last week, we saw the despair. How did David describe the situations he had been in? Yeah. As of snares of death, like almost a foot in the grave, just really, really deep stuff, right? Both literally, physically, but also metaphorically, too, could be our circumstances, okay? The despair. This week, in that despair, David said, I look to my defender, okay? So when he looks to his defender, this is what we see in the next seven or eight verses. And, and the things we have to do to understand what this means is that before we read this, we have to understand that this is ancient Near Eastern poetry, okay? There's a specific genre that's being written, the poetry of the Bible. We talked about this last year. There is imagery of a theophany. Woo, everybody say theophany together. Theophany. Theoph nice work. Two donuts. Theophany. A, a theophany is when God has made himself manifest in appearance before humans, he has appeared in some way. A theophany occurred at the burning bush. He appeared to Moses in a way of the burning bush. He appears in different ways. David is writing this as if he has these imageries of theophany appearing before him. Because he's saying, this is, this is who I'm turning to, right? In my despair. So what we want to do is we want to contrast that dramatic power that he's about to just unleash in this poetry with the insignificant that he himself feels. He's just one tiny, tiny person. Just one person in this great big world of creation, and yet this powerful, powerful deliverer is concerned about him. And that's some encouragement we can take as well in that, okay? So look at these words, and, and just before you sort of think, you know, the literal interpretation, think about what he's, how he's describing it poetically. When he thinks of God, we see this exact sort of thing in these other verses. I'll point to after we look at the, the passage. So here's, here's what he's saying. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness under his feet. He rode on a cherub and he flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. Thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through his clouds. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire, and he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. 
Then channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. When he thinks to describe how God came and delivered him, this is the imagery that he creates. And he says, I, again, choir master, put this to music because this is my expression of who he is to me. Wow, that's powerful, right? That's something we probably don't go to those extremes often enough to really see the God of the universe as the all-powerful. And here we are, just little old me, right down here in Clemens. And yet when he delivers us, it's as if he's broken loose all this hell and fire and brimstone and coal and flames, and he's coming down to deliver us as the only one who possibly can. So tonight, as we keep building, because if you think about what we did, I wanted you to build that prayer to say, you know, Lord, this is how I think of you, my fortress. This is my situation that I need you in mostly. And now tonight, there were cards in your envelope. This is where my prayer, oh Lord, rescue me, show your great power as, doesn't have to be something in the verse. What comes to mind if you were describing poetically the great power of God? And before you say, we don't do that now, that's just something they did back in the old days is the way they described something. We do that same sort of thing. You know, I, um, I'm, you know, you hear someone describe someone, uh, you know, Walt says, or Tammy says of Walt, he's my knight in shining armor, right? Not literally, but that's how she sees him when he comes and brings her flowers and all those sort of things, all right? Someone's my guardian angel, right? I've described something on them that is more powerful than literal, but that's how they are in my eyes. That's what I need. Someone's a shooting star, we use that poetic language. So let's take a few minutes, and in thinking back what we've done, use your card and just what is that description of God to you that either you've thought of or that you would like to consider moving forward when you think of the power of your deliverer, the power of God. It can be as metaphorical, uh, it can be as just brilliant imagery as possible because Key David said it was okay, <laughs> and God ordained it. It inspired it. So I think God says, hey, make me the biggest you can. Make me the biggest you can. Okay? So let's do that at our table and then take a few minutes to talk about it. If you'd like, you don't have to, but what would you share with someone at your table about that? Oh. All right. Does anybody, let's, uh, does any, anybody have examples they'd like to just share and shout out? Lava from a mighty volcano. But God delivers us. Yes, Claire. Light for your path. Yes, of course. That's great. What else? Anything else? that Star? Yeah. Yeah, almost like light. That's great. Yeah. As a dove. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Reflect on that this week. Reflect on that this week. And, and, and also, um, I hope you're starting to see in Psalm 18, when we look at chapters of the Bible, or we look at books of the Bible, if we don't consider the structure or the outline that the author was inspired to put it in, we kind of miss the, the, the rhythm of that chapter. We're kind of missing the, the meaning of what's going on. So I'd encourage you just to think about that again. You know, praising who I'm coming before. This is my distress. Oh, here's the defender. And next week, we're going to look at the deliverance. So in all of that, God's great power and all the things David describes, he's going to talk about God now coming to his rescue. We're going to make some towers next week, too. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, good stuff. All right. Well, before we go, and please don't look at the clock. It's way off tonight. We're in good shape. The final point one, the final point one. Next week, March 20th, we're heading up north. We're taking this show on the road. We're going to be heading up to West Forsyth High School and doing some laps. We like that little track they do in the parking lot there and get us started accustomed to kind of getting out on the sidewalk and making our way. And we'll talk safety before we go. And I'll talk about some things to look at. The commitment right now is great. You guys are good. This is four. I mean, you're a third through this week. Four out of 12. Remember your why. Trust the plan. And if anybody has any great ideas, uh, this was supposed to come off in about one to three days and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> So, I got talked into a uh, party decoration Saturday night, and I'm going to try something, yeah, we try all kinds of stuff. <laughs>
But uh, yeah, so that answers all your questions that y'all were asking about. Yeah. Hey, um, have a great night. Winning table, come see me. Wonderful workout, guys. We'll see you later.